Um, here, uh, we've talked about these before. Um, these are gigantic laws. Again, everyone thinks of Lincoln because they say he won the Civil War, right? 13th Amendment, emancipation. But these acts are gigantically important to our country. Historians will point out the fact that the Homestead Act, the Morrill Land Act, and the Pacific Railway Act, the National Banking Act, were arguably four of the top ten most important laws of the entire 19th century. Um, we'll talk about the West, go into Gettysburg in a minute. You can see um, troop strength, again, leaves always behind. Um, this is over three days. Vicksburg on the western side of the nation and Gettysburg on the on the east. You can see one. Like, this is uh, Vicksburg is happening in July of '63, and Gettysburg is in July. They're going on at the exact same time. It's a really big day for. Uh, I think it's July 4th, 1863. Um, Lee, or, um, Grant sort of secures the Mississippi River with Shiloh and then Vicksburg. At the same time, you can see uh, Pennsylvania. Why is Gettysburg and Pennsylvania an important battle to talk about? There's two real reasons. It's the first battle. Yeah, number one, a lot of historians will go about do what? So why are you pointing out there? Because he raised his hand. Oh, it's a rational reason to point. Um, number one, um, historians will say, some will say Antietam was a turning point because at, from that point the South was never closer to winning. Um, some will say that Gettysburg was a turning point because once Gettysburg was done, it was basically the beginning of the downfall of the South, right? But Gettysburg is also important. General Lee knew he needed help, outside help. Tell me why the Battle of Saratoga was important during the uh, Revolutionary War. He got French help because the French saw that the, 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 the America could win, right? Remember that? Well, so what is Lee doing here? He's trying to show that he can win. So he can get help from who? England. So he can get European help. He went into Gettysburg to show that he can win in the North. Also, if you're a Northerner and this war is going on and on and on and now the North is, or the South is coming into the North, what message does that send? They're getting more. They're ants. They want to go. They're getting stronger. No, oh, it, it, what, what Lee hoped was it would, it would break the spirit of the North. But, oh my God, now they're coming north. Let's just end this thing, right? But what ended up happening was they went north and they got whipped and then they started retreating. And now if you're the north and you whip them in Gettysburg, not as bad as you should have, but you went in Gettysburg and the south is retreating, now what do you do? You'll finish them. Now you have it, okay, now we've got them on the run. And this is where Lincoln was so pissed because he had the south on the run and he stopped. I talk about this with you guys a lot in volleyball. You guys, um, like athletes, you guys like lead the league in getting up in one game and taking your foot off the gas, right? Always talk about put your throat, your put your foot on their throat, and you twist until people die, right? That's what Lincoln wanted. In this case, literally, in sports, it's figurative. I told you about the chick that plays for our, our middle school volleyball team when she yells before the game starts. I told you. Um, she's a very good athlete. She'll probably start for our uh, Lincoln Catholic soccer team next year, which is saying something for a freshman Lincoln Catholic. Uh, before every game, she gets all the girls together, and they all chant, um, blood makes the grass grow, kill, kill, kill. Okay. That's her chant. She's my favorite. She is, on the court, the person I'd like to coach the most, because she hates the other team as much as I do. Uh, why did they go all the way up to Gettysburg? Why didn't they just go to Washington? It's kind of closer. Washington was very well fortified. Um, it was going to be a hard nut to crack. So, I mean, that's why. Um, all right, let's talk about the draft and stuff. Here is the draft. Remember, 18, which one had the draft first, north or south? South. But now we got the north, all right? The whole numbers required for the district. So every district gets a number that they had to actually fulfill, right? State had to fulfill a certain amount of numbers, and each district in the state had to fulfill a certain quota. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So, um, this is uh, at the courthouse at Worcester, Ohio. 
Uh, Holmes County has this many people. Um, Ashland, this district has this many. This district has this many. This is how many districts there are in the county, and then how many um, people from each district need to be drafted. All right. Once again, we see America picking on the Irish, and once again, the Irish are coming to save the day to win the Civil War. Essentially, what I'm saying is, if it wasn't for the Irish people, we would have two countries, and our world life would be worse off. Fine, I said it. Um, getting off the ship and um, being recruited. What do you think some of the things they were telling recruits as they were coming off the ships? You're going to get land. Money. We're going to pay you. You're broke. I mean, we're like these people come from Ireland and we're like, I think I'm so rich, I want to try America now. Right? That's not what, I, that's not what American immigrants were doing. So now you're like, listen, we're going to give you money. We're going to give three meals a day. We're going to give you some clothes. And you're going to get to fight for the country that's taking care of you. They don't know any better. Right? They're easy pickings. Look at this. In one, one um, county, county Benny cash down. Look at this. They want thirty thousand recruits from this area. Big numbers of people. So does that number go down? Like, if somebody pays the three hundred dollar cash down, does the recruit number go down? Like, does they still count as a recruit, or do they still need thirty thousand? Yeah. So let's say that Austin, you get, you let's say you get drafted. If you get drafted, what you do is you show up and you pay your 300 bucks, and then you're good. Or you show up and you bring Nathan, and you're like, he's going to fight for me. Okay. And then you're good. Did you do that, Nathan? No. She fight, back she fight for maybe Jack. U.S. bounty for new recruits. Maybe. Yeah. Austin, not at all. Jack, possibly. So, like, what is asking, like, if you pay the $300, you count as one of those 30,000? Yes, yeah, yeah. Wait, as, far, as far as I know, you do. Yes, as far as I know, you do. <coughs> All right, you can see recruiting black. Uh, here are the New York drafts we talked about, the riots, draft riots we talked about. Um, this is Manhattan. Do you guys, can you guys tell that? Yes. Okay, this is Manhattan. Um, if you're curious, this is where the Twin Towers were, right about here. Um, and you can see all over, up and down the city, here's the park. Harlem's up here, right? Here's like uh, the village. Here's Midtown. Here's um, the financial district. Um, all up and down lower Manhattan, houses were burned. Um, you can see the police headquarters were burned. Um, people were attacking. Look, they were attacking a, a, an orphanage, right? A black orphanage. Why would they be attacking black institutions? Because many Irish people were, and, and uh, poor people were blaming black people for this war, right? Um, because that's who they saw in their head that were they were having to fight against. So you can see all of these. Is it asylum? Orphan asylum is the same thing as an orphanage. Okay. Yeah. Because asylum is an orphanage. Ask my baseball bats used to remind me of Hannibal Lecter. I don't have one. No. Um, here are some, here's some pictures we saw of the riots. Um, some blacks were hung and shot. Um, you can see uh, uh, um, were hung from a tree and used as target practice. I mean, these were, I mean, hundreds of people died this. This was not like a. They picked on one guy, and that was the riot. I mean, hundreds of people died. Um, huge amounts of property was damaged. And um, this is a representation of that. Do what? I can't tell. They're smoking. Yeah, all three to them. They may have been. I mean, it was, it was pretty indiscriminate in the sense that it wasn't like looking for specific black people, like this guy or that guy. It was just if your skin was black, you could be targeted. Or else, oftentimes, if you were rich, you could be targeted, right? If you're rich and black, you had a really bad day. <laughs> then you were targeted. Then you were targeted. All right, let's talk about inflation. All right, we talked about this before. Um, look at the prices oh, just in coffee. three years. Coffee. Oh, my. <laughs> what if a man wants to go buy four pounds of lard? 
It's cost a lot of money. But look at this. I mean, six dollars to this. What percentage increase is that? It's almost a thousand percent increase. A hundred percent would be if that was, you know, twelve dollars and ninety cents. A thousand percent increase in how long? Three years. Three years. That would be like gas right now being thirty. Five dollars a gallon. <laughs> Where three years ago it was three fifty a gallon. What are colors? Gotta like my bicycle. Tell me how this can translate into wartime issues. Raise your hand and tell me how this translates into wartime issues. Feed the troops. Okay, it's gonna have a problem feeding the troops. What else? People yeah, deserve to feed their families. Yeah. If you know your family can't feed themselves. What are you doing? Right? What else? Kind of tells like how desolate they were. Well, um, it definitely shows that the financial system is beginning to collapse. Do you think you got better after 1863? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir? I was trying to say it's going to disrupt everything. I mean, all those purchases are going to tie into everything else, the business and such. Yeah, so the economic development, people are, I mean, this is going to, it's things like this that are the unspoken reasons why many wars are won or lost. And doesn't it once again sort of reinforce the fact that can you believe it lasted this long to beat the South? 